here we go and turn on the PowerPoint. The message titled this morning, probably a little unusual, it says, So Run. So Run. 1 Corinthians 9.24 Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So Run where I get this title from, that you may obtain. Every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that believeth, that beateth the air. Sometimes my reading is not perfect, I realize that, but this title says all run, but one receives the prize. Now we're gathered here together with a house full, but it's not talking about one of us winning the prize. Because we're one body, and that one body wins the prize in Jesus Christ. We stay in Him. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. But now you get out of Jesus Christ, you're going to trip, you're going to falter, you're not going to be able to run the race. The message this morning is get things right with God and run this race. Run it. Work it. Make it go. Make your heart determined to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So run, not as one that beats the air uncertainly. Don't fight like that. You know, the boxers, when they do their shadow boxing, they're beating at the air trying to get their rhythm going on their arms. But we're not fighting like that. We're fighting one fight that it takes everything within us to fight. We have to be determined to fight for God and make sure we land punches. Not as the one, when he's beating the air, he's practicing. But when he's up there fighting the fighter, he don't want to beat the air, he wants to beat the fighter. That's what Paul is talking about. Land the punches. Make it work. Fight the devil. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Singleness of heart, Ephesians 6 and 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there any respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 
Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore with your loins girt about with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. God had his blessing this morning to this scripture in particular. It's talking about servants being obedient to your masters. Now, I know we're not any servants in here, but the point is still the same. When you obey your masters, those who have rule over you, you don't do it as unto men, you do it unto, as unto God. Now sometimes we don't like the things that we have to do. I agree. But we have to serve the Lord. My dad came in here three years ago. He passed away three years ago last Monday. Next Monday's his birthday. But when he first came in here, being a man, unaccustomed to being cared for, his wife took care of him before. He just thought he'd sit in his britches no matter what happened, not let any of them young ladies take care of him as a matter of pride. And I had to remind him, ever since I've been in the hospitals and nursing homes, I've had to let people take care of me. It's the godly thing to do when it's their job. They had to keep him clean. He was determined he was just going to endure. I don't know how he thought that, but I said, Dad, you got to serve the Lord. No matter what you want in this life, when it comes time, you got to serve the Lord and let these people do their job. With singleness of heart, we serve God sometimes even when the situations are bad. Situations we don't really like. We have to put up with it because we're doing it as unto the Lord. We're serving the most I, God, no matter how humbling our experience is here, he was humbled even to the death of the cross. So he paved a way for us to understand that humility is not a bad thing. Humility is a good thing. Because when you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due season. He says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and put on the whole armor of God. Let's look at that armor. He said, Take the whole armor of God that you can withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. That's the real question, isn't it? Have we done all we can do to stand in the grace and the goodness of God? Sometimes we have to do a self-checkup. And then he said, Stand therefore with your loins girt about with the truth and the breastplate of righteousness. I love the Word of God. I study it. Study it, study it. I've probably read through it a hundred times since the towers fell. And that's no brag, that's just a fact. I loved it so much, and I wanted to know it so much. Now my eyes can't hardly even focus on it. But I can still listen to it once in a while, and I still study enough to preach. And I still read it and post scriptures every day. It's in me, it's in my blood, it's in my heart. And I take that Word of God mm -hmm. 
It's the, the truth that I gird my loins with. That's our protection around some of our most uh, vulnerable parts. We use that as a shield of faith. We're going to find out in the next set of scriptures. And we put on our heart, on our breast, the breastplate of righteousness. See, you can study the Word of God all you want, but if you never try to live right, it's not really doing its purpose in you. You have to live righteous before God. We're supposed to be running this race, determined to win. This next section is called the preparation. Ephesians 6.15 And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychius, a beloved brother and faithful minister, in the Lord shall make known unto you, known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that you might know our affairs, and he may might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren in love with faith. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. In sincerity. Amen. Paul's writing this last bit of this letter to the Ephesians to talk to them about the preparation of the gospel of peace. Sometimes... In order to prepare, you got to know how to put things together. You ladies, you know how to cook. You have to know how to put things together. Now, if I go in the kitchen and try to bake some biscuits, I'm in trouble. Because I don't know how to put them together. I don't know what goes with what. And I don't know how to mix it right. My grandma would take one hand and put it in her apron. On the other hand, she'd mix all her flour and everything, and she'd make biscuits with one hand. How in the world she did it, I don't know. But that was some of the tastiest biscuits I ever had. And if I could eat Grandma's biscuits today, I'd eat that instead of a good lunch. Because Grandma could bake some biscuits. She knew the preparation. It's just like serving the Lord. We got to know how to prepare ourselves, prepare our hearts and our minds to serve the Lord. First of all, it tells us that we got to have the gospel of peace. Peace, that's something that a lot of people don't realize what peace is. But when you have peace in your hearts with Christ, you can endure. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome. He's saying that because he prepared the way, we can walk in that preparation and knowing that we let him lead and guide us all the way. Take the helmet of salvation. Think about that, that helmet of salvation. That helmet guards your mind. What's going to guard your mind more than salvation itself? That experience you have with God. 
that a relationship that you personally have with him is treasured above all the things of this earth. And when we treasure him like that, in that gospel of peace, we treasure that helmet of salvation. We treasure it. It's a shield for our head to keep our mind and our thoughts pure before him and to love him with everything that's within us. You know, we talk about loving him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, but it's in the head where the heart is. Now, we think of this heart beating. This is the center of our blood flow, but that don't carry any thoughts in it. Up here is where you carry the thoughts. That's where the intents of your heart and mind is. God knows our thoughts and the intents of our heart. And it's right up here in our mind. What we intend to do for God. It's a spiritual thing. Where our heart is in our head, that's a spiritual thing. We acknowledge and know the Lord by the thoughts in our head that we keep them pure before Him and love Him with everything. Let me go on. And he said, Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with perseverance. Perseverance. That's that intent where you intend to win. you got to intend to win. Don't let anything keep you from winning that prize with the Lord. We're together in one. we got to keep the unity of the faith and the bond of peace. we got to keep God before us. Love each other. Help each other. Pray for each other with perseverance and all supplication for all the saints so that we as one body make it home. We want to believe God. Now, I know we're all individuals. And we have to have an individual relationship with God. That's true. But unless we love our neighbor as ourself, we're not really loving God. You can't be so distant from people because you have an individual relationship shit with God. you got to love each other. Jesus told his disciples, Hereby shall they know that you're my disciples because you have love one for another. And that's one thing that strengthens us. When maybe I'm low and you're high, you can come along and cheer me up. Tell me to buck up. Straighten up. Fly right might help me. I might be going through some things. You might do the same thing. Each of us has the time when we go through problems in life. Maybe something happened in our families or something. And it's heartbreaking. We need to be able to lean on one another. And in this place, there's a lot of time when we're not feeling real well. But sometimes somebody just needs to word, breathe a word of prayer to help us with all supplication before God. I wish somehow we could have regular prayer meetings, but with our individual disabilities, it's a hard thing. But you know we can still pray for one another. We can still love each other. And Paul said, I'm a man ambassador in bonds. He said, I want to speak boldly as I ought to speak. And he wanted everybody to know his affairs. In other words, one of the best disinfectants for people hiding secrets is to have an open conversation and saying, you know, God, I really need you. And he said to confess one to another your faults. Not to gossip, but to pray. One for another seemed like 
The church has lost the art of prayer. Lost the art of prayer, the art of the deal, where we seek God one for another. We got to make it home. We got to help each other. I love the Lord and I love each one of you. And I want us to make it home. That's my goal, is for all of, all of us to seek God and let Him move by His Spirit in our midst and let His grace show us the way. This last section before I get to the conclusion is the race before. We've been talking about running, now here's the race. Hebrews 12 and 1 Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not. Thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. But if thou be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we had fathers of the flesh, of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. You know, this race is already set. When the game is set, you have to play according to the time. If you're not at the starting line when that gun fires, you're not going to run the race and you're not going to be a winner. The race is set. We have to run this race. We have to. We have to go on until we finish it. We need to win this race. We need to run. Not as one that's shackled about by weights. You know when a runner's practicing, they'll tie weights around their legs to make their legs stronger. But he said, lay aside every weight and the sin that doth beset us. The reason they put them weights, they want something to restrict their energy so they have to overcome it. That makes them stronger. It's called besetting. It kind of hinders. But you say, get rid of those hindrances. Get rid of those weights. Get rid of anything that restricts you from running. This is the time to run the race. I want to run. I want to run this last mile home. I want to win. And I want you to win. We all win in Jesus Christ. And let's fight this fight. Let's run this race. He said, when our fathers chastened us, they did it after their own pleasure. Do you remember when your father chastened you? I can still remember the day 
When Mama said, when Daddy gets home, when Daddy gets home, scared the daylights out of us. My dad is a big man. He was a big man. And he pulled that belt off and it's, it had hit every loop. Whop, 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 whop. And put fear in you every step of the way. Every loop that hit, you could hear it. And when he took it off and he swung it, he didn't even have to hit us. We had already cried. Scared us to death. My, my dad was not a beater. He didn't beat the living daylights out of us. All he had to do was barely touch us, and we was already squalling. Just the thought of Daddy punishing us. And when you think about the Lord, He's not doing it for His own pleasure. He's doing it so that we're partakers of His divine nature. The whole goal God has when He chastens us is to make us like Him. To make us fit for the kingdom of God. In conclusion, I want to re read about the four horsemen of apocalypse. Revelation 6, 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. When he had opened the sixth, Second seal, the second beast say, Come and see. There went out another horse that was red, and power is given to him that said thereon to take peace from the earth, and they sh that should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, the third beast say, Come and see. And behold, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard a fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked in a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him, and power was given them. Power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with beasts of the earth. I just read that to let you know. Judgment begins in the house of God. And if it begin with us first, what will be the end of them that obey not the gospel of peace? God's all about peace. He wants to give us peace. But he's also a great man of war. And when people disobey him, they're going to pay a dreadful price. I've preached this morning on so run. And all I can say this morning is so run. Let's run this race. Let's finish our course. Let's do like Paul. He said, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. And let's keep the faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the glory and the grace you have given unto us. And the power of your word. The strength of the gospel. 
We thank you we can have our loins girt about with truth. We can have a breast breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Helmet with the helmet of salvation. Taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and above all, taking that shield of faith, wherewith we can ward off the fiery darts of the enemy. I pray, Lord, help us to run this race. In Jesus' name, amen. I share this gospel around the world in several foreign countries. So don't think I'm just preaching for us. I have a privilege of sharing it because...